Hi, my name is Robin Kay. I'm an associate professor in the Faculty of Education at UOIT in Oshawa, Canada, which is very close to Toronto, Canada. And I'm going to present a framework on understanding research questions. Specifically, I'm going to focus on questions in the area of educational technology. There are two main components of a research question. The first in blue here is causes, predictors, and correlates. And the second is response or, or a series of responses, and that's in red. Now let me give you some specific examples which will clarify how these two relate to each other. In terms of causes, predictors, and correlates, we're looking at things that might cause a response, predict something, or actually be associated with something. That's a maybe a softer relationship, something that's just associated but may not necessarily predict or cause. In the end, we're often interested in predicting or looking at things that cause other things. So for example, when we're talking about things, we're talking about demographics, technology, teaching strategies, and constructs. So examples of demographics might be gender, age, SES basic descriptors of your population that might be associated with a specific pattern of response. Also in educational technology, of course we're going to be interest, interested in a specific kind of technology, so we might be interested in a spe specific kind of software, a certain type of hardware, or online distance, perhaps e-learning. There's all kinds of technology and we need to specify the technology that we're interested in if that's what we're looking at in our research question. The other thing you might look at is a teaching strategy, how the technology is used, perhaps in a hands-on, constructive, interactive way, or in a more passive way with video podcasts. Maybe you're interested in problem-based learning and the use of technology. There are a number of teaching strategies you could be interested in, and that may be part of your research question. The final area is fairly general. And it relates to specific kinds of constructs like leadership style, learning style, Myers-Briggs in terms of how you, the kind of person you are in terms of internal or external motivators, that kind of thing. There are thousands of constructs. You probably need a scale to measure those constructs and see how they may be associated with a specific response. So what do we mean by response? Well, there are four categories of response that I'm aware of. Behaviors, attitudes, emotions, and cognition. Those are the four general categories of human response. So in terms of behavior, we might be interested in searching behavior, whether questions are asked, um, the extent to which students engage in distractions. Those are behaviors that may be uh, affected by any one of these causes, predictors, or correlates, or may be associated with them. In terms of attitudes, there are generally two categories, affective attitudes. So students feel, uh, not, not, not really feelings, but I guess it's associated with feelings, so it's certainly related to emotions. But it's opinions and feelings inside about specific technology, for example, or strategies. Um, what is it they like? What is it they dislike? that kind of thing. And then there's cognitive attitudes, which are, what are their thoughts about things? So how does using a specific technology change their thoughts, specific thinking attitudes about, th about things, whether one should engage in this or one should engage in that. So it's something, effective is more with feelings and cognitive is more with, with actually your thoughts about a specific topic. So we might look at how specific, a gender, uh, males or females, um, their affective attitudes or cognitive attitudes about a specific kind of technology, for example. The other thing we could look at is emotions, and the three most studied emotions in uh, education technology are happy, um, frustrated or anger, or sadness, usually associated with giving up or being despondent about a particular technology. So you might look at someone's emotions. And the other thing you might look at is cognitions. And that might be learning scores, 
outcomes, test score outcomes, whether students gauge, engage in higher level thinking. So the whole point of a research question then is to, I guess, connect the causes, predictors, and correlates with responses. So in other words, you're trying to manipulate what you're interested in here. So you might be interested in a specific software package and perhaps it uh, using a hands-on strategy, uh, you might want to look at that and students attitudes toward, attitudes towards that technology or attitudes towards learning or attitudes towards the subject area and perhaps learning scores or test scores and outcomes. That's the kind of structure that most research questions follow in educational technology. Now, there may be qualitative research, and again, it still follows the same kind of structure. It's just more open-ended, so we may not know specifically what the actual things that we're looking at here. It may be more open-ended. We know that it can be categorized into behavior, attitudes, emotions, cognition. We just don't know ahead of time what we're looking for, so it might be just more open-ended what we're looking at. So what are the, what's the impact of this kind of technology? And then we might have interviews and then sort the data and categorize the data based on these four categories. So regardless of whatever method you use, quantitative or qualitative, this is typically the structure of a research question.